everyone! Welcome back to the channel! This is Silver Hyena, and you might be wondering what the heck I have in mind for today's video. Anyways, if I sound a little bit weird, that's because I've been battling a really bad cold for about the last week. It's the kind of cold that hovers around like bad news, if you know what I mean, so I'm still a little bit stuffed up, still coughing. But, I'm over the worst of it. <sighs> Crazy things in the name of art, you know? Anyways. Those of you who have watched my other channel, Silver Hyena Plays, might remember when I unboxed these adorable Pokemon tins. Got some fun cards. I will have a link in the description below. Anyways, I've also got these. No, those aren't Legos, I promise. These are some half pans. These are some full pans. And this is epoxy. I had often spoken of, I'm going to turn these cute little Pokemon tins into watercolor palettes. Well, I'm finally doing that today. Time to get started. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to set Eevee aside, and I'm going to work on Pikachu first. Uh, because this is my first time doing this, and if I have to choose one to be the main guinea pig, I prefer Eevee, so Pikachu it is. Anyways, let us open up the tin, and before we even take this out of the package, we need to test fit and graph where we want everything to go. I know, test fitting and graphs, what fun! And I'm just gonna use this piece of scratch paper that I've used for scribbles and stuff for all sorts of other art, but all I need to do is basically just document where I put what so that when the epoxy is down, I'm not freaking out trying to figure out how did I have this going again? So, these ones are the full pans that I had gotten from Daniel Smith. And I've got ten of these, so I figure five of the full pans and then just fill in with the small pans. Hey! Oh, no, no, wait. Duh, that is five. I thought that they shorted me one. Forgive me. I cannot count today. Okay. Just listen to that. That sounds like Legos. So now I need to figure out the best way to get these in here. Oh wow, this is going to be able to hold quite a bit. Oh wow, that, that this is going to hold more than I thought. That's awesome. Anyways, what actually gave me the idea for this was this little watercolor palette here that my dad had made. Using epoxy resin to get everything in there. and So I figured, yeah, I could do the same thing with these Pokemon tins. Why not? But first thing you gotta do is make sure that everything is in there the way it's supposed to be. Or at least, um... A, a test fit. Okay, so this is about how we'd want them to sit. Got a little chart here, so now, forgive me. Got them all counted out nice and neat. So I'm moving the lid aside. Now's for the part I'm really nervous about. I just reused the red container from my Valentine's Day Squishmallows unboxing. I thought I could use them for art supplies, but they're just too flimsy. They just don't stay closed reliable enough. And I was looking for something that I could use to mix up epoxy in that 
I wouldn't mind throwing away, so these are going to have to take a hit for the team. And when working with epoxy, uh, make sure that whatever is around, you're not going to be devastated if epoxy gets on it. That's why I've got the newspaper down over my usual work area. And I'm going to take some extra precautions, so just a moment. Alrighty, so got myself some plastic gloves just because if I can avoid it, I don't want this stuff getting on my skin. So, precautions. Getting ready for surgery. Okay, so very important. Depending on what kind of epoxy you guys decide to get, make sure to read your directions, which is what I'm doing right now. Now then, this stuff has a dry time of 4 to 6 hours, and it cures completely in 15 to 24 hours. So, th this is a long game. You gotta be patient. This is my first time actually handling epoxy myself, so I, I am a little bit nervous, so I'll admit it. Uh, another tip. If you're wearing your Sunday Finest, change it now. Change into something that you don't mind if it gets destroyed. Okay. First things first, make sure that your surface is clean. Make sure that you have popsicle stir stick. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna double check my directions. And here goes nothing. Okay, so it's very similar to the acrylic paint. It just says squeeze equal parts. And I need to make sure I save enough for the other one. Oh wow, I feel like a total mad scientist right now. And remember, do not intentionally try to get this on you. You just want to take precautions. Okay, yeah, that, that looks equal enough, I hope. Oh wow, that is like, that is thick. Mix that bad boy right up. Oh wow, this is. Oh, that is. That is very thick. And for those of you who are Pokemon tin purists, forgive me. I'm not sure. This is gonna be enough. I thought it would be. Because you don't want your things going everywhere. Oh, whoa. There is a bit of a smell, a bit of a fume. So you might wanna crack open a window if you're doing this. Okay, and once everything's in there, try to get them all together. One big happy family. Alright, so now we just gotta let this bad boy set, and I'm gonna do the other one as well while I've got the epoxy out. And I will see you when they dry. Alrighty, so we are back. It is day two, and as you can see... Yeah, those suckers ain't going anywhere. They are secure. 
so we're good. We're, we're almost to the fun part. Ah! If the lids will stay put. But when it's fully closed, as you can see, it looks like the tin. When you open it, pellet! But of course, there's something very important missing. And we are going to get to that. However, I will set Pikachu aside because I plan to put some gouache in this one. And why aren't you closing? There we go. <clears throat> From the top, <laughs> I plan to put gouache in Pikachu, watercolors in Eevee. The thing is, is that the gouaches that I have, I haven't actually tried them out yet. So before I put gouaches that I have never used before into my special Pikachu travel palette, I want to make sure that I like them first. So Pikachu, you done good, my man. But you need to be set aside. Eevee, you're up. Or rather, Eevee? I choose you. <laughs> okay, so I had the forethought while I was waiting for these to dry. I wrote up a little chart that snugly fits. So that way when, as long as the paints are dry inside the tin, I can just store that right inside. And these are the real treasures. I'm just gonna grab one. Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors. Special thanks to mom for letting me borrow from her stash. So, special thanks and lots of love, mom. <laughs> yeah, th this, is, this is my mom's personal collection. So, yeah. Like, seriously, let's get some love for my mom in the comments, please. I mean, she she's making this possible, so let, let's give her some love, too. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, and that's not even, that's not even the end of it. Look at that. They're gorgeous. Anyways, let us commence. So first up, I've got Lunar Black. And I need to make sure that I do not get these mixed up because she has them organized in a very specific, very special way, which I can respect. Ah, okay, so Lunar Black, that was in the orange bin. And according to my chart, which I'm going to turn on its side so that way it matches up exactly with the palette, that or I could also just do that. That works. <laughs> <sighs> know what they say about us quirky artists. Here we are, Lunar Black. This is black, black, black. And so just get a little dollop in there. And with watercolor, the wonderful thing about watercolor is that, yes, even though a small tube like this could run you anywhere from 10 to even 20 plus dollars whatever the going rate is at Daniel Smith you don't need a whole lot because watercolor is so concentrated oh excuse me sorry just had lunch so I got lunar black and you can tell that Payne's gray is much beloved and there's a reason for that. Payne's Gray is magical. Which is why it's going into the big palette. There we are. Let's let that bad boy dry. That thing it keeps wanting to stay up, huh? So let's just see if I can push it. Down! 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 There we are. Anyways, I'm going to speed up this part, and I will get back to you in just a moment. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I almost forgot to mention, uh, 
This one snuck in there. This one is M. Graham. Not Daniel Smith, however, M. Graham is still a lovely brand. And Azo Green is M. Graham. Only M. Graham has this color, so I liked it. So this is going to be a mostly Daniel Smith palette. <laughs> With one M. Graham. I mean, like, look at that. That is... And it's so pretty. Anyways, let us carry on. All right, here we are, all filled up. i to get those crumbs off my little chart. Now then I need to, of course, let this completely dry, but just so that you have a basic idea in its entirety. And the, the, the tin lid, you've got the little divots from the Pokemon logo and from Eevee. You got yourself your mixing space. Well, your travel mixing space, anyway. If I was still using, the, if I was still at home and using this, I would definitely have my 50 million inkwell palettes out because that's just how I roll. But if you're out and about traveling, you got your, oh jeez, you got your palette right here. Perfect. Now I chose the colors that I did based off of just a. Uh, uh, base, kind, just just kind of base set colors mostly, a, a lot of neutrals, just just as kind of a, a most anything palette essentially. However, there is a reason why I chose a lot of reds and yellows, and that is because uh, my mom didn't have an orange in her collection. Um, uh, well, aside from the burnt orange, this... Um, I am not even going to try to pronounce that. Burnt orange. <laughs> but the burnt orange is really, really, really dark. So I, I am provised. I figure that Eevee here is probably going to be a permanent orange. <laughs> because, hey, if you don't, when you're painting, if you don't have a particular color, you make it. That's how we artists roll, or at least I do. Comment below, what would you do? Would you run out and buy orange, or would you go and make your own? Comment below. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, if you learned something, and uh, leave a comment if you decide to try this out for yourself, whether it be an Altoids tin like this. Here, let me, eh, come on. Let me show you again. Or if you used a Pokemon tin or any other kind of creative thing that you managed to turn into a palette of some sort. I love hearing about that. I like reading about that. I like watching videos about stuff like that. It's just so fascinating. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another video from me. With that all being said, this is Silver Hyena signing off. Stay creative, everybody. Bye! And keep opening up those Pokemon cards, too.